Today we introduce uh, Zoga Sigma, a new product. It's basically a platform product for building extensions for uh, Zoga services. This is going to be more useful and this is going to add more value for developers. Developers who develop apps in Creator or building extensions for CRM or for other services will get more benefits out of this Zogo Sigma. Today we offer uh, from Zogo uh, more than 40 plus apps for different business needs. These apps are highly customized for solving all the problems in depth and breadth of its own domain in vertical. These apps can also be customized for any unique requirement that comes for a business. Say for an instance, if we take a CRM, CRM solves all the sales problem and it, it has all the use cases solved already in, uh, in product. But still it can be customized for different requirements. So it offers um, custom module and uh, custom apps capabilities and you can create extensions for CRM. So this shows that we need a better experience when we run a business with more than one apps. So all of these apps from Zoho are potential on its own domain. As I said, CRM is potential for sales, uh, for sales problems and sales vertical. Each application from Zogo is potential to solve all the problems in its own, its own domain. But when we run a business globally and uh, when we grow in business, we need more than one apps. So that apps should talk to each other and the collaborative potential, I mean collaborative experience of those apps would be much bigger. So if we take CRM, it should talk to desk, it should talk to projects and it should talk to third party apps as well. So that we, the, the business process will be more smoother. We have an ideology of building Zoho apps. By default, it should talk to other Zoho apps as well. I give you an example. Work drive, if, if you, your files and documents that are available in the work drive, by default, uh, available in Zoho mail when you send an email to a customer. So that is done as part of, uh, I mean, Zoho mail's implementation. So you don't have to worry about uh, integrate or connect other Zoho apps into uh, any particular Zoho app. We can even connect uh, third-party apps to any of Zoho apps. You can pick a, you know, you can have a Google Drive, I mean, Google Drive feature in uh, email attachments, and you can send a notification to Slack when you need a, uh, when you are. Uh, uh, salesperson or uh, say, I mean uh, support guys to be notified when a ticket is raised in Zoho desk. This happens through a integration. This integration process would be a part of a product's implementation. So all I mean what we do is we'll implement that feature natively inside the product. You can directly start uh, consuming that feature from the third party in Zoho apps. It it it, it could be available just a click away. The other way of integrating third-party apps with Zoho apps is through extension. That is where uh, uh, we are building extensions for Zoho services and uh, publishing it in marketplace. These extensions will connect two apps. One is from Zoho app and uh, another one would be a third-party app. So these apps run in two different environments. There is no direct connection between these two apps by default. But in by installing an extension to a Zoho app, it will establish a connection to a third-party app. In our case, if you want to send any notification or if you want to add any record to a HubSpot, when an email get, uh, if a, when an email received in Zoho Mail, this communication happens through these extensions. I'll give you a couple of examples for uh, extensions so that you'll get a better idea of this extensions market works. The first one is Google Translate for Zoho Desk. When we run a business globally, we may get uh, support queries tickets from different languages. Our agents may or may not uh, understand that language and what happens is the support agent ends up with uh, translating content, I mean uh, the support ticket content will be translated using different translating tool. In our case, we use Google Translate. So the agent have to copy all the content of a ticket to a Google Translate from a different browser and get that uh, translated and then he comes back to the Zoho desk to give a replay. Why not have this functionality right inside the Zoho desk? So by installing an extension, it will allow an agent to pick a language from Google Translate and he can directly translate the content right inside the disk. Not just that, he can give a replay on his language and it will automatically translate it to the customer language and he can directly send a replay from Zoho Desk. This is one example and it is being widely used from our Zoho Marketplace extensions. The another example would be checklist in Zoho projects. 
In the previous example, we saw Google Translate as a third party app that is connected with Zoga Disk. But here in checklist is not any kind of third party app, it's just a functionality that is going to be added in Zogo projects. So Zogo project has a module task where you can uh, manage your uh, tasks and everything, right? So what if a task owner wants to have a list of work items that is need to be handled before completing that particular task? He can create a task list and he can add that work items as part of this particular, I mean, to a particular task. But that also goes through a usual task management process, but that doesn't require. So what happens, that uh, task owner has to maintain a separate list of work items in a different place to manage a particular task. So back and forth switching would, would happen. To avoid that, why not have the same functionality right inside the task module? So using this extension, it allows a task owner to create list of uh, checklist and uh, it allows to create multiple work items in the checklist so that he can have the complete track of what is need to be handled uh, before completing the task even during the process of that task. So these extensions are available in Joho marketplace. So if you visit marketplace.joho.com you can see a lot of extensions for different Joho services. The extensions building process started from building an extension for Joga CRM. Joga CRM offers platform capabilities where you can build your extensions and publish it in marketplace. But for other Joga services, we don't have such capabilities before Sigma. Now we are introducing Joga Sigma for mainly for building extensions for all the Joga services, but for CRM case, it will remain continue on the same platform. So let's talk about how, how to build an extension uh, and publish it in the marketplace. The conventional procedure of uh, uh, building extensions is little uh, no, tedious and it's a time taking process. There are certain factors and there are certain things we need to take care before uh, getting into the development. Even during the course of development, we need a certain set of tools to, uh, you know, to develop the extension in a quick time. The first and foremost thing is in the conventional procedure, when you need to uh, build an extension, you need to go through the API documents of both the services. Say in our example, you know, I'm going to build an extension for Joga Desk for translation feature using Google Translate. I need to go through all the API documents of Joga Desk first. Then I'll have to go through everything in Google Translate. Then I'll think about, uh, I mean, I have to pick the right tools, everything. I mean, everything I set it up ready, then only I can get into the development. The another one would be where to maintain all the code bases. Either I should go for uh, GitHub or, or, or I should maintain um, a remote repository. How many developers would come? How can I give the access to the developers for the collaborative development? So another uh, interesting case is backend functionality support that all the developers have in uh, mind before starting the development. For example, I'm integrating service A and service B. I have the API for the different functionalities of these services. But what if I need a different, function, different functionality that these services doesn't offer? Say for example, I want to generate a QR code against a customer ID or an account ID. I'm integrating Joga Desk with Slack. <coughs> I have to generate a QR code against a ticket ID, whatever. But this feature is not available in Desk or in Slack. So what happens is I have to go for an, another service for generating a, a QR code alone. So what happens, the data goes to a third service, unless it's not required. If there is a possibility of uh, generating code right inside the desk, it would be easier for the developer. So that functionality, we need to think about it before starting the development. So once everything set it up, we have to uh, know, uh, write code in client-side technologies using JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, everything. Everything is ready, built. When coming to testing environment, we need to compile that code and then host it in somewhere, in some server, we have to host it. Uh, we, we have to choose uh, AWS or uh, Azure or, see we have a catalyst today, so we need to choose the right server to host that extension, then only we can connect with the uh, Joga services. Uh, that I need to take care of. If you are hosting uh, extension in AWS, it's unnecessary of, I mean, you have to pay for them, uh, it's unnecessary of, uh, you know, uh, expense when you market your uh, extensions. Then publishing and managing extensions is a, another important factor for this extensions development because the extension is not going to be used by you only, you're going to sell it to your customers. So we need to go to a marketplace that is marketplace.jogo.com, you need to visit there and then you have to follow the process and then your extensions published. It's another process, two different places. So development environment would be uh, in your local environment and the publishing environment would be in uh, Zoho. So different places, 
different uh, process, different people going to involve in this, different tech stack. So there are many things like this uh, getting involved in building extensions. Why not to have one solution for all of these problems? So one solution to take care of all these, uh, you know, the factors that is need to be addressed before, I mean, before starting the development, during the development, after the development. That will be in one side, that a uh, tool to manage all of this. And that let you to concentrate only the logical part of the extensions. We, we introduced Zogos Sigma. It provides set of features and, uh, you know, uh, different tools for uh, building extensions so that uh, you can only concentrate on uh, uh, logical part of the extension, how you going to integrate of Zoga service with the third party app. So you can only concentrate on that part. I will go through the uh, key features of this Zoga Sigma one by one. The first and foremost thing is uh, we offer cloud editor as part of Zoga Sigma. With this you don't have to worry about code maintenance and uh, collaborative development all will be taken care from here. So we store all of your um, code base in our uh, repository and uh, we allow uh, multiple developers to develop these extensions. You can uh, develop uh, extension using client-side technologies like uh, JavaScript, uh, HTML and CSS and you, you can uh, put your font files or whatever uh, you are required on the client side. From this editor you can uh, test, uh, I mean once you develop the uh, extension you can test that directly from this, uh, from this uh, editor. You can see the uh, run button at the top. It allows you to host this extension to a uh, Zoga Sigma server and it will connect to the right Zoga service uh, in which you need to build this extension for. When you create an extension, it will be uh, loaded with a preset of uh, libraries. For an example, if you are building an extension for Zoho projects, it will come up with the uh, client-side SDK for that Zoho projects. Say, if you, if you want to create a task using this uh, extension, uh, in the conventional procedure, you have to invoke a web API to insert a task. But we, here, we provide a client-side SDK, say, uh, Zoho project dot add task. So, that type of functions will be available as a available in a JavaScript, so you can directly invoke it. You, you don't worry about the API that is working behind. So not just that, uh, we also support a CLI tool. It's a command line interface tool for building uh, same extensions. This is mainly for the developers who are used to a uh, different development environment. They might have used to a uh, uh, ID, say they might have used to Eclipse or uh, NetBeans or whatever the ID they may use. They can still continue developing with that. They don't have, I mean, they don't need to come to Sigma for developing it. They can continue still with the, uh, with their own environment. For bundling it and compiling it, we are providing set of uh, CLI commands. You can simply run that commands in the environment. I mean, you have that uh, in your local environment. And with that, you can bundle the entire extension as a zip file. And then you can uh, bring that zip file to Sigma and upload it. And everything will be in Sigma. So after that, the process will be the same. So the publishing and the testing, everything will be same. So development, you can still continue with your environment and coming back here, Sigma for testing and publishing it. As I said, uh, for the backend functionality, I gave an uh, example of uh, QR code generation. We support functions for uh, uh, Sigma. When you, uh, when you create an extension for uh, uh, server-side logics, you can use these functions. Right now, we support only uh, deluge functions. We, uh, we are in the process of supporting uh, Java, Python, Node, everything. So that's a part of our uh, internal framework uh, it's called uh, Function as a Service. So the language, the number of languages we're going to support through this will get increased. So the main and uh, the primary purpose of building extension is connecting, uh, to connect a Zoho app with the third party app. For that we provide connections. You're all aware of this DRE connections, we are uh, now working in uh, uh, you know, different custom function functionalities in different Zoha apps. The, it is similar, uh, it's the same uh, DRE uh, connections where you can find the preset of uh, connection available readily and uh, you can start using it. If you want to create your own connection for your, uh, say, XYZ service, you can still uh, create that custom connection using uh, this connection fun functionalities. We support basic authentication mechanism as well as what support through these connections. And then finally, we gonna, I mean, the Zoga Sigma will provide a one comprehensive summary. It's like a dashboard for an extension. From the summary, you can manage post activities of our, uh, extension development, like uh, you can keep track of the errors that occurs uh, during the execution of this extension from uh, Zoho products. And you can add developer here and you can publish, publish this extension to marketplace right from here. 
the next process would be publishing this extension to a marketplace. So when you sell this extension to a marketplace, you'll make money out of it. So that for that process, right now we have to visit Zoga marketplace in a different browser. That part is integrated with Zoga Sigma by uh, default. You don't you don't have to go to marketplace. You can continue the same process. You can follow the same process right inside the Zoga Sigma. All you need to have, uh, you need to give a, uh, your policy document and screenshots and uh, pricing details. Everything you want to see, you fill it up. The, uh, the extension will be sent to a marketplace for the review. Once the review is done by our internal team, it will get listed in your marketplace. Not just one extension, you can create as many extensions you want. It is completely uh, free. There is no limitations. And uh, there is no limitations in any of features as of now. For example, you don't have, uh, you can create as many functions you want to create. Uh, there's no limitations. And uh, whoever built extensions for CRM in on top of CRM capabilities, so that will be listed here as well. Uh, when you go, when you click on the extent, CRM extensions, it will be redirected to uh, CRM platform. For other extension, you can manage right from here. I give you a, how this Sigma is works at the back end. Let's take mail as an example. Zoho mail will be integrated with Sigma first. Once it, once it is integrated, you can add any uh, custom functionality to uh, Zoho Mail that integrates to a different uh, third-party apps. You can integrate with uh, Google Drive, Slack, or it could be anything. Not just uh, extensions, uh, it, uh, it powers widgets capabilities as well. There are many use cases for widgets in, inside CRM. That widgets uh, capabilities is added by Zoho Sigma. The difference between extensions and widgets is Widget is a single place where you can uh, show your application inside the CRM. But uh, in case of uh, ex uh, extension, you can have multiple placeholders to uh, show the data that is available in a uh, third party app. So after Sigma, creators started to support uh, widgets in, uh, in their pages module. That is also powered by uh, Sigma. So visit sigma.zova.com and start building extensions. If you have any uh, uh, clarifications or queries and uh, if you stuck up it anyway, you write an email to support at Zogo Sigma. And that's all about Zogo Sigma, the new offer uh, offering from Zogo uh, Product Suite.